Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis Colored Reanimator deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring none other than Olivia Crimson Bride, the signature card from Crimson Vow. It's a 6 mana, 3 4 legendary vampire noble with flying and haste, and whenever Olivia attacks, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. But as soon as we no longer control a legendary vampire, we have to exile that creature. So what are some good creatures to reanimate in standard nowadays? One of them is definitely Hullbreaker Horror, the new 7 mana 7-8 seven, creature with flash that cannot be countered and says whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one between returning target spell we don't control to its owner's hand, which we can accomplish by casting an instant, or we can return target a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, so we can start bouncing all the opponent's permanents back to their hand. Can also even save the Hullbreaker Horror from opposing removal if we can cast an instant and then bounce the Hullbreaker Horror itself back to our hand. Then we also have a one-off Toxrill, the Corrosive, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary slug, saying at the beginning of each end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control, and creatures you don't control get minus one minus one for each slime counter on them. So this will quickly wipe away all one toughness creatures from the opponent, and then slowly start shrinking them. This triggers at the beginning of each end step, so that also includes the opponent's end step. And there's more. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token, and for a blue and a black mana we can sacrifice a slug to draw a card. So a very powerful card indeed. Then we also have two copies of the Maid of Dishonor, a 4 mana, 4-5 four, legendary vampire. So this gives us a backup legendary vampire in case the opponent can deal with Olivia, that way we don't have to exile all the reanimated creatures. And whenever the Maid of Dishonor or another vampire enters a battlefield under our control, we get to create a blood token, only triggers once each turn. And a blood token is an artifact, can pay one mana, tap it, sacrifice it and discard a card in order to draw a card. So that can also function as a discard outlet, so we can use it to discard some of our bigger creatures to then later reanimate. And then we can also pay two mana, sacrifice another creature or blood token to drain the opponent for two and gain two. And then speaking of reanimating, we're also playing the full playset of Return Upon the Tide, a reanimation spell with Fortel, so we can spend 2 mana to exile it, and then later cast it for 4 mana instead of 5, and that's a great way to reanimate some of our creatures. So in the best case scenario, we manage to discard both Olivia and another creature that Olivia can reanimate, and then bring them both back on turn 4 with our Return Upon the Tide. Then at 1 mana we've got some interaction with Flame Blast Bolt, the new Magma Spray can also target Planeswalkers, dealing 2 damage to a creature or Planeswalker, and then exiling them in the process. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Cathartic Pyre, can be used as removal, dealing 3 to a creature or Planeswalker, or we can use it as a discard outlet, discarding up to 2 cards and then drawing that many cards, so that's a way to potentially discard 2 creatures at once. Then we also have the full playset of Expressive Iteration, not a card we typically want to cast on turn 2, but a great source of card advantage, can maybe exile a land with it on turn 3, and then play that land from exile as our land for the turn, and still put an additional card in our hand as a nice 2 for 1. Then at 3 mana we've got more interaction with Divide by 0, can return target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand, so it can use it as a bounce spell or a counter spell, and it's even a nice answer to opposing copies of Hullbreaker Horror, as it doesn't actually counter it, we can still send it back and make the opponent replay it. And then it also lets us learn, and learning is actually very useful in a reanimator deck, because we always have the option of discarding a card and drawing a card, as opposed to grabbing a sideboard lesson, so that can help us to potentially discard one of our creatures to then later reanimate, or we can of course grab one of our seven sideboard lessons, including environmental sciences to find a basic and gain two, we've got one of each basic clan to search up, teachings as well as introduction to prophecy as card draw, start from scratch can deal with artifacts, illuminate history is another discard outlet, mascot exhibition can be an extra win condition, as well as confront the past to deal with opposing planeswalkers. Then we've got two copies of Prismari Command, a very versatile instant, can choose two modes between dealing two damage to any target, we can draw two and then discard two, so we can potentially draw into some creatures we can then later discard to reanimate, and then we can also make a treasure, which is helpful for ramping into some of our more expensive spells, or we can destroy an artifact. Then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Unexpected Windfall, similar to Prismari Command, can help us discard and draw, as well as creating two treasure tokens, very helpful for ramping into some of our expensive things. 
And then we also have the full playset of Shadows Verdict as our sweeper of choice, as it will exile all creatures and planeswalkers with mana value 3 or less from the battlefield and from all graveyards. So this is a one-sided sweeper as our deck doesn't have any creatures with mana value 3 or less. And then it's also a nice way to avoid death triggers from opposing creatures, like Old Growth Troll doesn't trigger. We can also avoid an Eye Twitch getting a lesson, and there's plenty more examples. And then of course all our expensive creatures that we've already covered. Then the mana base doesn't have any fancy creature lands, as we need all the mana fixing we can get, as well as one of each basic land to search up with environmental sciences, as well as a nice way to search up a basic in case the opponent has Field of Ruin, which is also quite popular. And then we've got three of each dual land with Shipwreck Marsh, the newly printed Stormcarved Coast, as well as Haunted Ridge, and then four of each pathway in our colors with Black Red, Blue Red, and Blue Black. So that's our deck, now let's jump into the games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Bit of interaction with Pyre, eventually verdicts, and then we can figure out a way to reanimate Olivia with the extra cards we find with Iteration. Turn to Sentinel, pretty good against the reanimator deck as it turns out. So I'm probably going to Cathartic Pyre that first chance I get. And then next turn we can maybe iterate Aspirants resolves. Wait and see where the counter goes. And then we'll uh, kill the Sentinel. And now it's probably a fine time to iteration. Hope to find a land. Alright, so I think I'll just pick two lands here. So in hand, mountain. And then we've got Spire to maybe discard the Holebreak Horror, as well as Olivia, to then reanimate. And then the Shadow's Verdict should be able to buy a lot of time too here. So this turn, maybe iterate, find another land. Or I can just, um, you know, foretell the return upon the tide and then go for an end of turn Pyre. Although I don't have to foretell this, I can just cast it for five. Unless Sathalia shows up, which I guess is a reasonable argument. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, return Fortel, keep up Cathartic Pyre. Right, another Aspirant, so probably going to Shadow's Verdict before I reanimate, as this is a lot of damage. I guess I have to watch out for a Sun Gold's Sentinel potentially exiling my stuff, so if my plan is to Shadow's Verdict next turn instead of Reanimate, then um, I could get punished. Kind of a tough call here. I think I'll still go for it. And then if they exile one of my two creatures, I can Reanimate the other one. Right, so we'll wipe the board. And next turn we can return. And we're close to hard casting Holbreak Horror as well. Elite Spellbinder are gonna have a look, but our reanimation spell is safe. So they're probably gonna exile the horror here. Make it nine mana. It's gonna be quite pricey. But uh Yeah, we can return. I could also wait one more turn so I can return and have divide by zero backup. But then we're gonna be taking quite a bit of damage, especially if Haven gets involved. So let's return, and then I could also express a iteration just to trigger Holebreaker Horror if I want. Bring back Olivia. Attack. So we're gonna give up a little bit of value with this iteration as I wouldn't be able to get to full 2 for 1 experience, but bouncing a Spellbinder might be worth it. Best case scenario, I would have had an instant available to use the Horror's ability to potentially like bounce a, uh, a removal spell from the opponent as well.
And then what do I like? Flame Blast Bolts or Prismari Command? I guess we'll go with Prismari Command here. And then the land will go to waste. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a bit on the slow side, but double iteration can help hit my land drops. And then we've got a way of discarding any creature we draw and then reanimate with return. So we'll see. An aggressive creature draw could certainly be quite punishing. For now, have to play Coast Tapped if we want to iteration on three, and then we can foretell on two. Turn to Innkeeper, so a green ramp strategy. No need to bolt, so we'll just foretell. Another Innkeeper. Could also use Prismari Command to destroy a treasure, as her opponent seems to be missing land drops. That's reasonable. If the card they want to ramp into is Esika's Chariot, then Command can also destroy the Chariot. If it's a Planeswalker, then could be better to destroy the treasure. And then which other mode would I use? I guess draw to discard to. In the hopes of finding something to reanimate. Alright, fine. So draw to discard, destroy an artifact. And then I can get rid of some of these bolts. Okay, there's Olivia too. So I could go discard Olivia and Maid of Dishonor, and then next turn Return brings both back. And uh, the Maid of Dishonor makes it so it doesn't get exiled if uh, Olivia dies, so that's pretty cool. And then hopefully they can't ramp into anything too scary here. Even if they go land chariots, we've got a profitable attack with the Maid of Dishonor. Opponent looking at Field of Ruin on my lands. Good thing we've got a couple more basics. So probably go for Mountain. Can even use the Bolt now. Aha, uh -huh, so it's a life gain deck, I see. So our opponent was just missing colored mana. That's fine. I guess I can exile the veteran so it doesn't come back and we can smash the opponents. And then do I want extra red maybe? So pretty cool turn for play. And then we've got more removal, more card draw. And our opponent's still struggling with her lands. Step one, iteration. Finding a backup Olivia. Sure. And then we can attack. Can also use the blood token with the maid's ability to drain your point for two. Another field of ruin. They might run us out of basic lands. Float to red. Well, I'm happy I included the third basic. Do I need to do anything here? Probably not. Opponent hits us for four. Could kill an innkeeper. Was saving the bolt in case our opponent had like a moon dancer we could kill in response to any life gain triggers. But it doesn't appear to be the case, so I guess we'll take out an innkeeper. And 
and then probably fine to use the blood token to drain them for two. Ooh, Toxrill, which we can almost cast next turn. Um, yeah, if I had kept my blood token, would have been able to discard it with the blood and then reanimate. So I guess let's go digging with iteration to see if I can find another way to discard. And divide by zero will do. So doesn't matter too much if I put it in hand or put it in exile. So I can divide by zero, bounce root grazer, and then discard Toxril with a learn. Even found a hole breaker. Reanimate Toxril. And that's game. Also would have been able to kill Innkeeper with the ability, make a slug token, and then next turn we can just hard cast a hole breaker horror. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hands definitely on the slow side. I do have discard outlets for Hullbreaker and then a verdict to maybe help me catch back up. So I'll try it, but not feeling particularly great about it. Play my blue red land first in case I cast a bolt next turn. Also good for potential uh, expressive iterations. All right, the pack leader I can kill luckily. And then I want double black in play probably for verdict as opposed to blue red for iteration that I don't have. And then I'll kill the pack leader now in case my opponent has a snakeskin veil. Go to divide by zero for their next play. All right, so they're a red green deck with a storm seeker. Pretty good. So we'll keep up divide. Next turn I can play the maid. Uh-huh, Tovalar. So, could just bounce the Slasher instead. And then next turn, the mate can block Tovalar. I guess that's fine. Definitely an argument for just main phasing the Divide last turn, so we didn't let it switch to nighttime. And then I'll discard Hullbreaker. Alright, so can play the maid. Opponent is going to get a hit in with her Storm Slasher next turn, but that also kind of walks into my Shadow's Verdict, so I kind of want him to play it. So land four. Into the Storm Seeker. Can give itself hastes. And attack. So I think we'll take five, they draw a card, but next turn we can wipe away both. Ooh, Crimson Bride, so very close to doing something powerful. For now, we'll Shadow's Verdict. And leave the maid on defense. Will also be useful as an extra legendary vampire for Olivia. So hopefully we draw land. Back up Tovalar. And a Naturalist's. Alright, that did switch it back to daytime. And I probably just Shadow's Verdict again. Could also divide by zero, which I should probably main phase now, so it doesn't switch to nighttime. Which can discard the uh, Corrosive maybe, and then next turn Olivia, if we draw land, can uh, also bring that back. But I'm kind of happy with a 2 for one here. And then do I want to hit for four and potentially take three on the way back? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Alright, there's a Storm Seeker indeed. And a Liberator. Could technically destroy my blood token, but it's probably not going to happen. Still no land, unfortunately, but 
Prismari command can kill Liberator and then either make a treasure or draw to discard two, which is likely to find a land. And then I can also divide by zero, so that seems better. So deal two and then draw to discard two. All right, so don't really need return upon the tide. So I'll discard Toxrill and return. And then I'll have divides at the ready. And then Olivia bringing back Toxrill should be pretty strong. Stormseekers can trigger. No need to really bounce right now. And then end of turn, probably still divide. Just so they don't have as many good blocks available. And get a mascot exhibition, maybe. Could get environmental sciences for a bit of life gain or teachings for card draw. Let's get the exhibition. But it's Olivia time. Make an extra blood token. And then do I smash with both? I'll play it safe and just send Olivia. And then go for Toxrill, maybe, shrink down their team. And then next turn, can go for Hullbreaker Horror, which uh, I can also trigger by playing the Mascot Exhibition second main, although they should be dead by then. And yeah, our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand is a little sketchy. I do have Prismari Command to potentially draw, make a treasure as well, but really need that third land still, and currently won't be able to foretell Return Upon the Tide turn two. Don't have any creature to really reanimate. So could definitely work out with especially one of my pathways as the next couple draws. But I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan. Right, this is a little bit better. Probably bottom one Shadows Verdict, and then we've got a functional hand. Up against Mono White once again. Definitely a popular deck at the moment. So we'll pass, and then Pyre can maybe kill a two drop. If they've got a Thalia, we've got that covered next turn with a Pyre. If they just attack with Usher, I'm fine with it. Radiant Grace. Alright, I guess we'll kill it in response. And a Lunark Veteran. Okay, so next turn I can play the Maid which buys us time until we eventually wipe the board. All right, Spellbinder, probably gonna take the Shadow's Verdict. Spellbinder, definitely a very effective card against our deck in general. Can delay a Sweeper or just exile one of the creatures I want to discard, and once it's in exile, it's difficult to cast because it's very expensive, and of course we can no longer discard it. But some mono white decks have started cutting Spellbinder in favor of Welcoming Vampire and more two powered creatures. Alright, Pyre can kill Spellbinder, which is probably the priority over playing the Maid. So I don't take too much damage. And then uh, take it from there. Moves to combats. And it's going to be a second main Luminarch Aspirant, sure. 
play made. And then I could discard land to my blood token here. Although I eventually want to get to 7, so I think I'm still happy with an extra land. can also use a blood token to just gain 2. So we're not under too much pressure, still at 18 with the Shadow's Verdict coming down in a few turns. But we also don't have anything going in terms of our reanimation plan. So, next turn the adversary can attack. Ooh, there's Olivia. Okay. So we'll play Olivia. And then there's nothing to bring back, but now I'm okay trading the maid for adversary as we'll be able to reanimate it. And then just one land away from Shadow's Verdict. Another Aspirant. Alright, so they might put two counters on Adversary now. I think I'm still fine jumping. And then reanimating the Maid next turn. And then reanimating a Legendary Vampire kind of has built-in protection with Olivia. Windfall I cannot cast. So if Maid attacks... Of course, they could triple block it, although I doubt they would do that. Maybe I should sacrifice a blood token now, although I can also sack one to the maid's ability to gain two. So let's attack. See what they do. Bowden probably just takes it. And then I think I'll be forced to discard the windfall in the hopes of finding some other interaction. Or at the very least, the land for next turn. Could have also done this first in case I found a bigger creature to return. Also would have been reasonable. Alright, there's my land. So in that case, I probably don't need to show them the land. I can pass and maybe just crack some blood tokens to uh, gain life here. Since we're going to take a substantial hit... but then the board's going to be mostly clear. So we'll use the maid. That kept us alive. So now I have to be careful that the cave doesn't kill me. But uh, we can Shadow's Verdict, and then Mates can attack. Olivia can stay back to block. Alright, so... Board is clear, but we're at 3 life. Warhound finds a land. And Sungold Sentinel, pretty good against our Reanimator deck. Although we can take it out with Prismari Command. Okay, so how do we feel about draw to discard and deal to damage? And then hopefully draw into something we can reanimate. Although, I guess I wouldn't be able to attack with Olivia because of Cave. Um, but I can still just keep an expensive creature in hand to just cast next turn since we have 7 lands. Alright, iteration's nice, so we'll keep that. Probably could have tapped my mana a little bit better. Okay, divide by zero, in hand, and then we'll just play the land to have it available. And then could attack with Maid of Dishonor. Because then if my opponent activates cave attacks with both, I can bounce the Warhound and still survive. 
and I want to start applying a bit of pressure. And then divide by zero can learn for mascot exhibition. Another iteration, so if I iterate and find a land, I can still exhibition. Seems fine. Did not find a land, that finds Pyre and Hallbreaker Horror. So in hand, what do we put? I guess I'm one mana short of actually casting the Horror. So a little awkward. I guess I can put the Horror in hand, but Olivia can not attack. I guess next turn I'll be able to attack. Alright, so let's try this. Holebreaker Horror in hand. Exile Return and then cast Cathartic Pyre, which can discard the Holebreaker Horror. Alright, and then we'll just hit for four. It would have been a little bit safer to just cast the Mascot Exhibition, but I think we'll be fine. Can always use the Maid to gain two life as well. So maybe could have afforded to attack with Olivia anyway. But yeah, now we can attack with Olivia, bring back Hullbreaker, cast the Mascot Exhibition, and have the Maid's ability to also sacrifice some tokens, and that should seal the deal. Let's get in there. Opponent has to block as well, otherwise they die. So, yeah, we've managed to beat Mono White twice here, although it's by no means an automatic win. The Mono White deck, especially when on the play, if they curve out, can make life very difficult for us between Spellbinder, Thalia, creature lands like Faceless Haven. So, it's a winnable matchup if you draw the right interaction. But uh, especially on the draw, things can be difficult. Portable hole can just exile whichever token. So opponent can attack with their cave and then we'll just sacrifice. I guess I'll just do it now. Sacrifice the 2-1. Although there is an appeal to having the opponent attack with the cave and be tapped out and then gain 2 in response since we have plenty of damage here. So cave gets in for three. And uh, yeah, that should be game. All right, sweet. The whole breaker horror can bounce the warhound so we can spare the opponent some blocks. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is pretty slow, no two mana play. So, for opponents on an aggressive deck, we could get run over. The mana is also not ideal with no actual dual land, so if I play this on blue, I might be missing double black for verdict. Let's take a mulligan. All right, this I like a little bit more. And then get rid of a land. I can turn to Pyre, discard the horror, to then uh, reanimate potentially. Opponent on a red aggressive deck. So. I guess I can play a red source in case I draw the bolt next turn. 
but I'm probably just fine casting Pyre instead. So this is okay. And for three. So, yeah, nice aggressive start here. Definitely going to Pyre as removal as opposed to discarding to stem the bleeding. Could have considered doing this all main phase so they can't use the Pit Fighter's ability to sacrifice a vampire. But I guess that would have required them to also have a burn spell. There's Magda. So now Prismari Command can kill Magda and we can draw two, discard two. Probably don't need both return upon the tides. And this wants to be. Double black might be necessary for my sweeper. Sure. Opponent moves to combats. Deal two, draw to discard two. Right, these can go. Or I could hang on to the second return, but it's a five mana card, and I only have three lands at the moment, so red should have a hard time killing a seven eight, anyways. So we're down to twelve. But no follow-up, so opponent might just level up Crawling Barons. Did also not draw land in the meantime. So I could foretell return upon the tide. I could first pyre to discard and draw. In the hopes of finding a land, and then I can also foretell, and then next turn I can reanimate. Yeah, could be taking quite a bit of damage. They can level up Barons, next turn attack, hit me for six, and then potentially burn me out which would not be ideal. So instead I could divide by zero, bounce pit fighter, and then use this to either get environmental sciences or discard draw. I'm just going to pyre main phase, discarding pyre and shadows verdicts or divide and shadows verdict. Definitely shadows verdict. I guess we'll keep the Divide, since that can get another Lesson, which is another way to trigger the Hull Breacher, potentially. Right, I found a land. For Talon Pass. Next turn I can reanimate the Hull Breaker. Opponent did not level up Crawling Baron's end of turn, so... Saved myself... 2 damage. Olivia's nice, too. So, can return, Hullbreaker, and hope they cannot burn me out. Has to happen this turn, because next turn I can keep up Divide as well. But then it's still a long road to actually killing the opponents. Barons is attacking. Interesting. So we're at six. Opponents on the burn plan, I guess. Divide can also get sciences to gain more life. And the maid can also uh, potentially gain life. So what's my plan here? Do I divide the pit fighter so I can attack and sciences to gain life and hit my land drop? Or do I just stay back and pass, but then if my opponent has multiple instant speed burn spells, it's going to be a little awkward. Yeah, I guess divides to get sciences is reasonable. Even if they play a kicked adversary, I wouldn't be dead on board. But I'm also fine playing the control role. Right, it's going to be a reckless Stormseeker that uh, resolves. Opponents can move to combats. I guess I'll let them attack and then I can bounce 
two things with divide by zero. So I'll block the Stormseeker and then divide the Pit Fighter. And then I'm not going to choose anything. Get Sciences. And hope they don't have double play with Fire in Hand. Okay. So now Sciences can bounce Spitfighter, can attack, play Maid as a blocker. And then next turn Olivia can maybe help us close out the game. So I can play Olivia. Anything to reanimate? We don't. But I assume that uh, bouncing this is enough. Good 14 damage here. If I had a big creature in hand, I could discard it with a blood token to still reanimate it. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, Mono Red can be a scary matchup. Opponent potentially missed out on 2 damage, which could have made the difference. But, uh, yeah, we have some early interaction, so we can play a control game, so we're not like this single-minded combo reanimator deck that doesn't interact at all. So pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Now is the deck going to be competitive? Probably not in the current meta game. There's a lot of blue decks with counter spells, which are pretty tough for the reanimation game plan. Of course, sometimes we can also start hard casting or hull breakers, which is a pretty effective strategy against counter spells. Although most of those decks also have ample removal to kill the 7-8. And then... Uh, yeah, of course, the aggro decks can potentially have a disruptive curve with creatures like Thalia and Spellbinder, which are gonna do a good job of slowing us down to a point where they probably can kill us before we manage to stabilize. So I don't think the deck's necessarily gonna take over standard, but if you're looking for a fun reanimator deck that makes use of some of the new cards from a Crimson Vow, this is not a bad place to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.